The word cataract originally refers to waterfall and in Hindi as we call it Motya Ben that also refers to a particular color. So the color is white but in few individuals this cataract instead of getting white gets brown or rather black. So here we have this individual in whom there is a brown and a dense cataract and these cataracts are different from the routine cataracts which are white. So we will see this surgery and see the nuances which are associated with this kind of cataract. So these cataracts are brown and they are found in rather older individuals more than 60 years of age and they are, these are also commonly seen in patients who have chronic diabetes. These cataracts when we start looking at them we will find the pupil usually is not very well dilated because the sphincter pupillae and the dilated pupillae muscles are not very functional. So in this individual we can see the pupil is about 6 to 7 millimeters in size and coming to capsulorexis the capsule is usually more fragile. So if we can recall that the capsule in younger individual is more elastic in contrast this capsule in these individuals is more fragile and paper like. So it tears easily but it doesn't extend but at the same time it becomes fragile so one has to handle it with care especially when performing fecal emulsification. So capsulorexis has been finished and keep a tab at the appearance of the pupil which will gradually get smaller although it doesn't seem so pathological that it will inhibit the surgery and placing a blob of viscoelastic 2% methyl cellulose always helps in displacing the meibomian gland secretions which may be present in few individuals. Doing a hydro dissection and now smoothing out the viscoelastic gel blob so as to have a regular and non distorted view of the anterior chamber. So this surgery is being done under topical anesthesia and as you can see patient is little bothered by the irrigating fluid but ultimately the patient stabilizes. So going ahead and aspirating the overlying cortex zooming out a little bit and the prime objective is to get a complete full thickness chop in first go. So here we are using a horizontal chop technique and together with that using burst mode of ecomulsification which provides 100% power for 0.1 second and burying deep and here you will see that although this has created a cleft but still the core is unattended. So what is needed now is rotating it because a piece of the nucleus has been consumed and there is no potential to bury the tip here. So there is slight displacement of the nucleus and then attempting again. So here somehow the crack was not completed and as we can see the chopper has got stuck in the nucleus which will be released further and now we need to rotate it and get an area where we can have adequate material to bury the tip and get a purchase. So again proceeding with applying burst mode power, 3 or 2 pulses are sufficient to get adequate depth and once we have adequate depth then the chop is completed and we can see the void behind the nucleus. So that is a very reassuring sign in these cataracts that the full thickness chop has been achieved otherwise these cataracts are very difficult to crack. Now the further the job is to have multiple full thickness cracks so that you have separate pieces of nucleus which are di disassembled and one can simply pick them up and emulsify. So going ahead engaging the first piece which has been disengaged from rest of the nucleus and lifting it up at the pupillary plane and consuming it using FECO power 
or pulse mode. So now we have switched away from burst mode to pulse mode and that is essentially to save the amount of energy dissipated in the interior chamber at the pupillary level because this will be causing some damage to the overlying corneal endothelium. Now once the nucleus has been chopped into pieces, one can simply engage pieces one by one and chop them repeatedly to get smaller chunks. So the key factor or the primary factor which is very important to achieve is a full thickness chop at least in the first or second go. And this full thickness chop allows these pieces to get separate so that each one of them can be pulled up and emulsified. If there is no full thickness chop then the problem is that the posterior plate which remains intact will behave like a connecting surface which will not allow these pieces to come up individually for consumption using phaco emulsification. And repeatedly if the phaco power is dissipated in the eye and if the job is not completed then extended use of ultrasound power inside the eye will usually cause uh, damage to the endothelium and may be instrumental in causing further loss of metriasis and the pupil gets progressively smaller and this is one of the reasons why people are afraid to do phaco in these kind of cataracts and rather this can be considered as one of the relative contraindication for performing phaco in these kind of situation. So the phaco emulsification has been completed and now we are removing the residual small amount of cortex which is there in the capsular bag. So because bulk of the cataract was the nucleus so there is very minimal amount of cortex left behind although this needs attention and removal otherwise this cortex will have displacement with passage of time it may come into the pupillary area covering the visual axis and compromising the vision. Now the cataract is completely removed and we are ready to implant an uh, intraocular lens. So proceeding with implanting a single piece hydrophobic monofocal IOL So the IOL goes into the bag and the trailing haptic can be conveniently dialed so that the whole of the IOL goes and lodges in the most natural position the lens should be that is the capsular bag. Proceeding on to remove the viscoelastic material. So this is an important step because these cataracts which are present in these old individuals Along with this cataract, they also have slight compromisation of the trabecular meshwork and as a result, any left behind viscoelastic will usually cause a raised IOP the next day. So thorough wash of the viscoelastic is must to have next day comfortable patient and a clear cornea. The surgery has been finished and the anterior chamber is being inflated and the self-sealing wound will get sealed with adequate IOP is achieved. This is the day one post-op picture and we can appreciate that there is some amount of central keratitis and this patient had vision of 6 by 18 in this moment. And this is the picture at one week when the cornea is absolutely clear and patient's vision was 6 by 9. This is another such photograph which is capturing the same detail. The cornea is clear and the patient has good and excellent visual outcome. Thank you.